Oh, uh, okay. There we go. I think that's what I meant to do, right? No sound? Okay. Is there sound now? Is there anybody out there? I'm going to step away to grab my water bottle. Let me know if you can hear and see now. Like, I think we can. Here, water bottle, water bottle. So you can't hear me, right? And you can't see anything either, right? Here, look, can you see this, Ninja? Can you see this? <laughs> if so, you're number one. Not that it matters. This is actually a, not a dummy bin, but this is a bin that I have set up right now with nothing in it, aside from springtails to get the bioactivity going. I was just kind of making sure everything was decent in the frame, and I'm going to mute it here because I'm going to sneeze. Yeah, I can type good. I'm going to sneeze again now. Yeah, and it's one of these nice little do yous so I can practice my DJing skills when I'm not doing isopod stuff. I'm going to mute it again. I'm going to blow my nose and chat for a moment or two. I don't think anyone else is going to be here, so we'll probably start after that. It's not, well, I don't think you're chopped liver yet, just regular liver right now. I just, I want to tell how my day has been going and I, I hate saying it like as people come in one after another and either having a stop or a restart or junk like that. So, and I wish I could, the one thing I still don't like about StreamYard at least I don't know how right now. I don't. I wish I could zoom in like I could if I was on the YouTube live stream. And I don't want to mess around too much and like cancel the stream or something. But that's kind of annoying. I'm curious. So let me. In fact, let's do that. <clears throat> nope, that looks too big. That's a little better for these guys. I 
I'm going to do that in a separate stream, literally, where I, I either just, if I can't find anyone else to just hang out, I'll just log in on another device and invite myself. I'm, it's not anything I'm super worried. Like I said, I can just kind of do what I did and improvise. And I'm going to do exactly what you said eventually. I'm just not that super worried about it right now. And I, yeah, I do appreciate it, though. Here, I'll entice these guys out a little bit. These are Porcelio Levis, the more dairy cow. Once they come out more, once you bring them out the, with the light and shaking them up, they get a little shy. But these guys are actually very bold and very big in terms of isopods. So once they realize, okay, we're all settled in, we're good. And oh my goodness, there's food. You're going to see a very good feeding response. You can see their little antennae poking out from little parts of the holes in the leaves. One second, someone is at my door. Good mommy, you know you're going to be recording, man. We'll give you hugs. And I'm live streaming, man. <laughs> Check out this plant that I got, man. Well, I think you will like it. Look at the leaves. I love them. Mm -hmm. I knew you would. In fact, I'll go. go oops, they don't. <gasps> But do me a favor, back mm. up and see. Stop. I'll go mm. put it on my computer, and you can watch it on there if you want. Yeah. And I mean, you can hang out with me, but when you want to kind of look at what people are saying, and you can even type comments. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. Ooh, I said bonkers. Bonkers. It's bonkers, yeah. Some of the cool bonkers. Uh, bugs? Huh? Hold on, my dad's calling me. You're my little DJ, ma'am. Hey, Bobo, tell them about the plant that you just saw. And remember, Bobo, don't tell anyone about how mean and bad I am and how I bust you and betray you. Don't tell them any of that. Remember, you always say I'm good and I don't do any of the bad stuff. Remember. I hear you. <laughs> Bonker says hi. Remember, man, tell them how good I am, right? What are these things? Those are all the leaves. And the, that's what just... The, the red stuff. 
those aren't just different parts of the leaf. I forget. In fact, maybe you and I can do some looking. I forget. I, I would call them the veins. Now, all not all the leaves have them, but not all of them are that visible. That's why I like that. They look very cool, huh? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Bobo, can you help me? I, I need your help. Can you do me the biggest favor in the world? Can you look on the table there? And if you look on the table, I left a plastic thing, and I also left some name tapes by the little barbecue. See them, the white pieces? Can you go grab them, like on the table by the barbecue? Yeah. And one of the things like, that I'm talking about is one of like these things. Okay. And the reason why I want is one of the things down there is the plant name of this, because I forget it, but it's on the tag down there. And plus, I don't want to litter. Yeah, please. All of that needs to come up, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mambo. Sorry about all that, kind of. Can you type something in the chat for me? Because I just I'm trying something on here, and it's switched a view on me. I'm curious if it will display a comment. <laughs> Thank you, the man with the band. Mm -hmm. And um, real quick, if you want to take this and you can tell them that's what the plan is, try to read it. How was it, Simon? I was kind of away while I was talking to the little one. She ended up coming to spend the night. Hey, Simon, did you happen to get that comment on Discord? I left it and then I, I had to leave... To, I'll tell you about what, what today was like in a moment, but I didn't even like stay around for any kind of response. I mean, this is my dairy cows, just so you know, and they're up for a bin upgrade very soon. Wow, I didn't even say that this time. Yes, that's my girl, Bobo. Go check that message though on Discord. You'll get a you'll get a kick out of it. Yeah, there you yeah, that one. Yep.
Oh, here they come. The cows are out. That little greedy one up top's got a whole trunk to himself. Look at him. I want to try something, actually. See if I can give you guys a bit of a two-for-one. So, these are the milkbacks, Dairy Lavis milkback. So, um, let me grab, will that work? No, hold on one second. So Ninja, these are, it would be like looking at a brown wolf and a black wolf where they're the same, but they just are different. Where the one, these are all the same breed, Porcelio Lavis, but the ones on the right are Milkbacks. You can see they have more of a plain gray, but they're, down the, I will say, dorsal or middle area, a lot of them have those grayish splotches. So yeah, today was an interesting day. We had our family medical checkup for the year. That's supposed to be done before school. But my oldest daughter does not like shots and has borderline anxiety attacks, sadly. Um, I was not laughing at that. I was laughing at the milk bags that almost <laughs> flipped each other over. But because of that, it took a long time to get her to be able to take the shots. Well, the shot to just one. And what's neat is, I think for me anyway, I don't mind it. I understand that her having that issue because growing up, all of my life until um, halfway through my Marine Corps experience, I had the same issue with shots. And I was worse as I would pass out if I got shots. She just hyperventilates and loses focus. Well, I know what we're going to do. <clears throat> Wally's not here, but we're going to perform a little experiment. I'm going to splash some of this, which is the, sorry, I was kind of covering it, the veggie one. Where are you at? Where's the other one? Oh. Then I have... The Protein Plus doesn't seem to want to. There we go. So I'm going to put both in there kind of side by side and see if there's a preference or if they just go to destroy whatever they come in contact with first. And Bobo, just remember, you don't have to hang out there unless you want to. I know you have fun doing at that stuff. Though. This is the protein. Protein plus.
Supreme Chow. Tell everyone about how things have been at school this week, Bobo Fett. And tell them how you did at the doctor's today. So on the left is the protein, protein, and then veggie, veggie. Splash more into that. I use a bunch of the stuff you girls stop using. You don't even know. That's called repurposing. I use your paint brushes. I don't care. I'll use your little... This Mambo, does this look familiar to you? Hmm? Mine now. That's what you get. You want to know what else I got, ma'am? Check this out. Mm-hmm. All for me. Check out if you can. Again, I don't know how well the view is, but this guy here, he's got this whole fish pellet to himself curled up around it. <laughs> it's one of those moments I wish I could take the camera down or zoom in, but again, I can't with StreamYard. Oh, Simon or Ninja. Do I, I mean, I don't know. You're not, you don't do this, Ninja, but if you want to come into StreamYard, Simon, I don't know what you're doing, but I could post the link if you want. <clears throat> I've never done any of that, so I'd have to like putz around with it, but just an option. I'm actually surprised the milk backs are more out than the dairy cows. The dairy cows, again, the ones on the left, are generally speaking more of the active. <laughs> busting out through the leaves <laughs> oh, I hope that came out nice <laughs> tell him Bobo ooh little man Kai can you see this little guy over here? That's the little Bobo Beba. Mankai is M. Well, so there's two different words. M A N C A is a manka, which is a baby isopod. And if you have more than one, they're called mankai. M A N C A E. So you're my little manka. Ooh, Bobo, can you see this isopod butt right here? got a big old butt like you do Ooh, but that's actually a male see can you see mambo this one has short little butt spikes but this one has long pointy butt spikes and this one has long pointy butt spikes these are the girls and these are the boys the boys have the well not all but in these bigger ones 
And in some species, the boys have the bigger pointier butts and the girls have the shorter little butts. I'm not looking at their butt, ma'am. I'm looking at their uropods. Duh. So far, at least, both seem to be eating the veggies over the protein, but I don't see that they've come into contact really with the protein ones on the left. Hey, Bobo, tell everyone in the chat what a hypocrite is. Guess what? Um, a horse. That's what I'm guessing. A horse. <clears throat> Hydrating time. Bobo the Brave. And dad tries very hard not to be a hypocrite. <laughs> I have to cough. I'm going to commute for one moment. That link should be the thing to come into the studio, Simone, but I'm not sure. Again, I, I'm, I've never done this, and I'm trying to look and see where it will tell me. Um, if anyone's there. Really quick, Bobo, does this look familiar? Bobo the pro pro. Oh, one discovered the protein side of the house. Dun dun dun. In fact, I wonder if I Now, I hope there's not much feedback because I know it has like a option for that, but I don't know if it auto does it. So, no, nah, it's all right, mate. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep. And I oh. hope everyone only hears you once. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I want to try to play around with something. I was hoping. Oops. I've just set up my uh, my app. Hey, Simon. <laughs> 
the moss in Michigan is better than in the UK. <laughs> oh dear, I might have to show you some of that moss that we don't have here then in a minute. I've got a big hey. box full. I found the great moss in Michigan. I just had to go to England to get it. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd just leave this on rather than my face. Now, is that a, 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 a ant colony? Yeah, the trouble is, my, my camera is... In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's skip it. I'll just do this. One second. One second. Because I've got... Uh, just setting up now this particular ant colony. So, ah, there we are. <laughs> we, just, we just set this up. This is jewelry boxes uh, that she was going to throw away. So I had some uh, some of this fish tank cube, and we decided we'd just link them all together and put the ants in. And uh, there's over got well, a couple of thousand ants in there. So. It's quite a lot. <laughs> I think uh, ants for me are going to be like dwarf whites where I don't ever want to get into them because I'm just scared they're going to end up anywhere. Like, And I mean that literally just, uh, I want to say it was Monday or Tuesday this week. I was going through my zebra bins and I found dwarf whites. And again, the funniest thing is I never purchased or got dwarf whites. They came in with something I had and I've just, I, I found them in, uh, what was the other bin I found them in? Um, my canyon giants. Dilatatus, that one? Yep, Dilatatus. Yeah, I'm the only one who... I, like, I say, I think canyon giants sounds so much cooler than giant canyon isopods. So I, I always call them that. Thanks, we Well, I actually just call them Dilatatus because like, I don't think we use giant canyon or canyon isopods or whatever here. We have them here, but they're wild here. So it doesn't make any sense for us to call them giant canyon isobots. Oh, okay. Now, see, that's, and I know in, at least originally from what I've heard, and I think I read this in Isopod Zoology, the ones here, and I hear, say here in the U.S., are mainly limited to, I thought it was California and maybe Arizona, uh, wow. which is a lot more dry, arid than uk or michigan so it's, it, it's all just kind of odd the way isopods are like that yeah they, have, they do uh originate hey bonkers i think they're actually from here i think that's where they're from originally okay. uh, and they, they've sort of populated the west of the uh, usa <clears throat> and now oh no, it's okay i've just had uh I know I keep vanishing off the screen. I wasn't really particularly ready. I've got a mess going on here. Because <laughs> uh, we, ju we just did this, this handle thing. We got some lovely, I don't know if you can see her. She's just melted to adult, a big dead leaf mantis. It's quite a big one. But she's a bit dodgy. I'm trying to play around right now. I can't figure out how on my phone. To like make yours the main one, so I'm sorry about that. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, it's probably difficult on the phone. Yeah, she's like a little puppy at the moment. This one. I'm just gonna put her back on her plant. She keeps falling off things. Go on, babe. There we go. How's that looking, Bobo? No, that's not a grasshopper, Bo. That's Al at Simon say it's his. <laughs> it's uh. And Deraplatis desiccata, which is a dead leaf mantis, giant dead leaf. So, yeah. But she's a bit, she's a bit dopey because uh, I had to help her get out the mops because I didn't want to lose her. And uh, yeah, she's a bit, a bit on the dopey side now. So I'm hoping she won't die, but she might. I'd be very upset <laughs> if she does because I really like yeah. her. I, I say that's it. it's one of the reasons I hesitate to get into things like mantises with their just lifespan. Oh, but I actually I went out, I got a money tree and I'm going to be setting that up. And then I have hey Bobo Fett, can you type what that plant was in for Simon again? Boba Fett. 
<laughs> and then I'm going to, I'm going to put, I have some moss and some wild caught creeping Jenny. I'm going to put down there. So I'm going to have it layered where the, the money tree will be the top layer. The plant that she's going to be doing is the other one. And then the lower ones are going to be that creeping Jenny and the moss, hopefully. That's cool. Cause we have all those as well. Quite common. The creeping Jenny, especially. Creeping Jenny's what? I'm sorry, I had just walked away. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. I, but the creeping Jenny is, uh, Jenny. We, have, we have that, you know, quite a lot of that. Yeah. Creeping Jenny's what? I'm sorry, I had just walked away. Yeah, that's terrible. Is that some? Yeah. I do. Steve. What's up? Have you got YouTube to buy at the same time? She has YouTube on in the room, but here, no. That's why you got feedback. Well, see, that's what's... I, I, I'm wondering if it's Ninja. No, it's you, mate. I can hear it. But she's, she's... I mean, in the other side of the apartment. She's... And no, with you and I, nothing has changed. The only difference is Ninja. Oh, Ninja. If you can look in the options again in settings, there will be a, a, a literal option that's like feedback reduction, um, something like that. Oh, he's in John as well. Yeah, he's just lurking, lurking ah, like a bug. Yeah, he must have YouTube on. Okay, let and, me let me try. I'll be right I back. Am, I'm stepping away just for one quick second. <laughs> I am I am technologically illiterate. If you close YouTube and just keep StreamYard open. There I am. There's a major delay, though. Yeah, it's because YouTube's on. There I am. There's a major delay. Yeah, Ah, uh, what are you doing on the table? Hey, give give Bonkers the microphone for a minute. Let's let's see what she's got to say. She can't grip on anything. Come on, honey. Come on. She's All right, I'm back, and I didn't hear anything that was, ma'am. You were supposed to say I was busting you, but yeah, this is. All right. I'm back and I didn't hear anything that was, ma'am, you were supposed to say I was busting you, but yeah, this is. Dr. Stephan, for you to pass the microphone to me. You're going to hang out here then? No. Oh, you can. It's up to you. I want you to stay here with me. Oh, that's fine. You pass the microphone to me. You're going to hang out here then? No. Oh, you can. No, they're right in the back. Try very careful. Look, there's like a that ball can five or six seconds delay between time. the sound on my iPad <laughs> and the sound on the computer, and I cannot mute the iPad, so there is an echo. Oh, yeah, it's not muting. You need to close it, mate. Only, only leave Streamyard what? open. And close what it. Oh. What if you turn the <laughs> iPad off? Or do you wanna? Uh, yeah, I I don't even know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Well, remember. Uh, Keep yeah, moving. I, I don't even know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Bobo the pro. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. Yeah, I think the only thing I'm doing is confusing stuff. Well, I I don't mind at all. I just. You can hang out now. Hey. Oh, good. I thought I had myself muted. <laughs> uh. 
there has been twice now. I've oh, I've literally almost clicked to remove you from the stream by accident, Simon. <laughs> Because it's just so oh, small right. on this thing. So just, I mean, as a heads up, if I do that, it's always when I try to, like, either add, like, blow you up or, like, shrink you back down. The the rim, add, the, like, they done they did it really bad. Like, under whatever I want to do, there's three options, but the one right under it is remove. I'm like, come on, you guys got to do better than that. She's not very well at all, this one. We saw me and Nick on our walk the other day at several of them but one was what i think was a chine because is it the chinese ones that can be both green and brown and actually kind of both at the same time yeah yeah and she had an issue with her wing that looked like it looked like what i would call like wet rot on a leaf if that makes sense it does it makes perfect sense they, they, they do have or they can have problems with the, the wings when they're molting if something gets in the way they can it messes them up now, it once is there a um, how would I say this? A, a point at which they stop molting, or do they keep just doing it until they die? They molt until they get wings. That's it. Once oh, okay. And then never after that. Never after that. Once they get wings, they're an adult, and that's it. I don't know if okay. I just got back in a tank. I'll show you another one. <laughs> And remember, Bo, if you don't want to hang out in there, you never have to. I know you're having fun, though. Thank you, ma'am. And if you're getting hungry, let me know, okay? Come on, babe. Come on. This is more of a traditional one, I think you'll think. I don't think you can see yeah. that. Let me try and add you without removing you. Hold on. <laughs> or blow you up, whatever. How's that looking on there, Bobo Fett? Can you see that? She's uh, quite feisty, this one. She, <laughs> she likes it. I was watching in that one... Um, what the video was? I don't know. One of yours where the mantis was trying to like get at your shoulder... The whole like half of the videos just kept reaching and reaching. <laughs> they didn't know you could bottle feed a mantis. It loves it. What is it eating? I, again, I can hardly see on here. I, this is just sugar water. Oh, okay. I shouldn't give them too much, but ah, she, now she, the Swiss sugar water's dripped on my hand. <laughs> She's now trying to eat. Ow! They don't, like, hurt, so to speak. But Literally biting the hand that feeds her. Yeah, they actually, they actually nip. It feels like somebody's jabbing me with a, a pin every time she has a, 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 a bite with it. And it's, uh, it's very uncomfortable. So that's what I want to keep doing. But, yeah, that's that's a traditional one. This is, this is actually an African mantis, but... Um, it's more traditional, I think. I haven't got a Chinese mantis. If we'd have done this a month ago, I did have one. Um, but now I've only got uh, mostly Asian and African and nothing else much. Yeah. Other than that, go on, go on there. Find some stray ants. Go on. <laughs> I don't want to get off me now. They, they really are sort of clingy sometimes. Yeah, we found one, like, we, in fact, was it? Yeah, that one that um, I mentioned earlier, because, again, we found several, but I, I forget it was that one. We ended up walking a good two or three hundred yards. The thing was just chilling on um, Nick's head. It was cl climbed up there. We just left it, and it was just hanging up there the whole time. And Like yeah. I say, about two or three hundred yards up, it was like, yeah, I'm done. They are very, um, I don't know uh, the word for it. It's just something they know people are okay it, it just that's how it feels <laughs> and it, it's it's a strange thing because obviously it's just an insect but at the end of the day it, it honestly feels like they're they're smart and i just realized something else steve what's this that is the, like this is the first time you've actually physically talked spoke yep 
I, I want to say there will no, because I was. I remember there was that one stream I went to, but I think I was just typing in the chat, not kind of oh, like no, we're saying that like this. Yeah, no, it isn't. You you came on my test stream, didn't you? With Trond. He was at the other one. Out. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I just tested. I was just testing it, and uh, yeah, it was you. You and you and Trond joined. Yeah. yeah. I forgot. I forgot from Steve, though. I mean. So yeah, that, like I said, that was more about testing your stream. I don't think we yeah, uh, did no, talk since then. Wasn't a proper stream. You have to forgive old people, Steve. I no. can only catch the last part. You have to forgive old people. Forgetting things. I'm old. <laughs> no, not you. Him. Five us. I don't yeah. know if I can for forgive him after all that moss shaming. <laughs> no, no, the microphone's over here. Okay. She's talking. She's talking to the uh, to the computer, so that's okay. why you can hear her. <laughs> she's leaning here. over to my PC, going, oh, "He's old." Yeah. <laughs> the microphone's over here. Normally it's here. Like I've got the camera. The camera was set up over here in front of my table, so I can't actually see the screen. Is that the only fan set up? Yeah, yeah, that's for me only fans, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I've got heat, sorry, it's bloody cold at night. Yeah, so the the screen's actually over there. So when I was showing you that answer, I had no idea where to put it, because I can't I can't see that part because I'm old. So, <laughs> that's the way it is. I, I said I, I had my daughter's like uh, annual checkups today, and I always, when I do that, go to the eye section and check just to make sure my eyes are not going bad. That's one thing I, I'll never, I would never be able to wear contacts. I'm too thin skinned to be touching my eyeballs. And I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm paranoid about losing my vision one day, especially because what made me really paranoid of it was one of the conditions I have called sarcoidosis in a, in a, lots of people who get it, it ends up, I, I don't know the science behind it or whatever but it, it basically at some point can start to affect your eyes so i'm always kind of hypersensitive to that yeah we've got uh wear, coma in I, the family so. I wear contact lenses, Steve. It, it's really easy to put and take them out oh bobo's mom used to do that and if she ever wanted to like just be you know tease she'd be like oh check this out and start taking her contact out and i'd, I'd have to turn away and like it was gross I, I, I don't like it either, mate. I think you know, you know, on your own. I think it's horrible as well. No, it's weird. <laughs> I just thought I don't know. You don't mess with your eyes. You start messing your eyeballs. It's just no, no thanks. Just stick that. Keep it yourself. I'll have to. Uh, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm definitely going to do. I'll just show you one box. I've got one box out. And it's it's Lily is preferred, not Lil, or is it the opposite? I forget. Lil, L Lil, okay. Shorter yeah. is better, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just like one bit <laughs> moss, you know, that we keep it. We generally have it like a carpet. I mean, you can look at this. This is like one piece of moss. Don't be nasty. Which is. Uh, Don't be nasty. Don't be flashing your moss like that in front of the kids. Well, this is my only fans. I do it for moss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's generally what we do. We just peel it off the floor and roll it up like it's AstroTurf. <laughs> Pop it in a box and uh, give it a spray. And, and that all that goes for everything, really. And I haven't, I've not found too, like, I want, maybe I found a. Ooh, nice. Hold on. I don't know how well in that in I'm watching my jumping spider get a mealworm in here. I'm like, yes. I didn't know you had a jumping spider. Well, so um let me set this back. I have a few, so I actually had a big bold jumping spider. I gave it to Nick because he has he's got more of a setup for it basically because it, it um it was a full grown one probably about the size of a thumbnail like your i mean your literal thumbnail but it, it had two clutches of uh slings and he wanted a few and i happened to be going over there so i just brought him the whole thing so he has her and the 
um, slings right now. But what I tend to do is like, in fact, I'll move this again. So all of these things here, not all of them, but um, like this one, I want to make sure to look in the camera that I'm doing it so you can see. But so this one, this one, this one have jumping spiders in there because they have a lot of fungus gnats. And I don't want to put I try to avoid um, using mosquito bits as often as I can. I don't I want to avoid it. So I'm like, OK, I'll put a little jumping spider in there. And in a couple of the moss bins I have behind me same thing i just got a jumper in there just hanging out eating this you know keeping the fungus gnats in check and once they get bigger i'm gonna you know bring them out but i have a couple i got a bold i i don't know what this one is in here i it, it may be a, i don't know maybe a bold but it's got a really nice looking interesting looking butt and then um i got a couple i don't know if they're yet because they look very similar when they're small if they're zebras or tan jumping spiders we have a, we, we have quite a few here we're like and i mean just jumping spiders specific after uh the what call it the um uh, zephyrus we've got zephyrus here i think got about 30 or so jumping spiders but they're all tiny um i can't really see that the little's gonna look can you see it can you see that at all like I, it's so small in here i have no idea can you see him pulling the mealworm away he's fighting with a with a worm or something? Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, I can see it. Fine with the worm, she said. <laughs> I can't tell right now if that's a bold, though. We've got bloody loads of jumping spiders. I don't know how many there are. But we've got loads in pots down at the bottom there, which are um, new bombs, shall we say. They've just hatched. <laughs> We've got the the bow jumping spider. We've got we've got the Florida version with the orange butt. I think yeah. that may have been the video I was talking about where I with a, a mantis was trying to climb on you. There's always a mantis trying to climb on me. <laughs> there's, there's always with some. I guess there's always some like this. That looks like a pile of sticks up there. It's actually got mantis in it. Uh, hopefully, no. she's going to lay her, her eggs there. I've got mantis by my side. Oh, these are mantis. Everything here, you can see is mantis behind me. So, yeah, I've got quite a few. And uh, obviously, isopods, a lot of isopods, actually. We haven't got all the shelves up for the isopods yet, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll try and show you. It's pretty dull in here. I ain't got all the, as I say, I ain't got all the uh, things up yet. But can you see there? Can I stick the light on for me, please? Can you see that? No. Why not? Hey, Ninja, next time if you put like an ant or something oh, in your yeah. other hand, it'll probably jump across and eat the... It, they'll, they'll eat out of your hand if you can get them comfortable enough. These are uh, these are isopods, Steve. Goodness so, gracious. Oh, my. There's more. They go higher and even lower. There's everything. And down here... You see that? I don't know. Yeah. All this is mantis and jumping spiders. A bit more food. Oh, oh, that's mantis and jumping spiders. If that shelf gets knocked over, that could be an interesting little battle. Um, yeah, but it's, this shelf's never going to get knocked over. So, <laughs> I don't, I've got a light there, a ring light facing the bloody camera, so that can not help, does it? But yeah, I've got, uh, I've got so much stuff in here. Um, even got scorpions and things. So let me put this back a bit. Yeah. I mean, we've still not finished the room. Um, you got a third room? But there's tons of stuff. I mean, we've got tarantulas as well. So, you know, a bit of everything, really. I don't think I'll ever do any, in terms of spiders, anything larger than a jumper. Uh, I, I, I'm not a spider. It's funny, like I, I'm not a snake person, but I like garters. I'm not a spider person, and I like jumpers, and that's like as far as I want to go. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind garters and snakes. I used to have them uh, when I was a kid. I yeah. love them. Now that I know, like I, you can't. I say you couldn't commit suicide by garter snake unless you shoved it down your throat and tried tried to. Like they choke. can't poison you. Yeah, you'd have to choke on it definitely. Yep. 
And again, that alone is, the, and that's the only reason, real reason I'm paranoid of snakes is like, I don't like to die. So I don't want to do that. You know, that's not, that's not the reason why I don't like them. I, I find them boring. I really find it boring. I mean, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's a slivery stick. I mean, that's all it is to me. Have you seen any? And, and I'm not. I don't disagree. That's the fast. I, in my opinion, the thing I like about garter snakes specific is that they're communal. And not only do they just like tolerate. It's not that they just tolerate each other. When you have several of them, they get more bold. They go out more. They explore more. They'll eat more aggressively and things like that. So again, and again, that's part of the reason I'm more fascinated with. Um, garter snakes than um, any other one. Like I said, I can put two of them together, and even if they're both males, they're not going to kill each other. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I love that. And like I say, I could it, it, I could go and walk into a pool of garter snakes, and I'd get some rashes at worst. I think I think uh, half I think and half. Put one away and do half now of this, and half when this is ready. Okay. What's that? I'm sorry. I said, I think any animal or any insect or any like reptile that will live communally is always interesting. I think that's what's so interesting about isopods. Mm -hmm. I are... think you and I mentioned um, not they're not spiders. I just I had a total mind drain. Um, they're not daddy long legs. They're but <sighs> harvestmen. Harvestmen. Yeah. Yeah. I heard there are certain ones of those that are very communal also. Yeah, there are a few. I mean, when it's slings, when it's small, they all live together anyway in a big, like, massive group. Uh, there's a name for that. I can't remember where it is. When they're, when they're all in a group. You must have seen them on, on YouTube where somebody grabs hold of a, a big load of them and then they start running all over their arms. That's, uh, that's just the way they do it. They huddle together for the warmth and then swap places because they're smart, basically. Which I think is pretty cool, to be honest. <laughs> it, it's it, it is funny though part of the um again the the natural protection thing like you were saying when they're all together and snakes it's the same thing most things don't mind going after a snake or a spider or just stepping on it but seeing like a whole slithering mass of you know snakes and spiders it's just naturally different yeah i don't i don't well spiders was better there's only one tarantula that will live together which is uh and they've got to be in the mood to live together, you know. But if you get one that's bigger than the rest, it, it, it can't predate on them. Uh, one of the best things I've found for living together is assassin bugs. Hold on. Stay or keep that thought for one second. I got to check on, ask Bobo a question. Okay, no. Just let me know when you've had enough. Uh -huh. Let me know when you've had enough. Okay. Sounds like a big fat buzzing. Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay because I can talk and all that. I'm not sure. Hmm. That's one of those that I love the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we actually talk about books and stuff. Yeah. Not, uh, Bug thugs unite. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've seen a lot of the other streams are like they're streaming, but they're not they're not really chatting about the bugs, and they're not showing the bugs. So I think it's, it's I know, it gets a bit dull after a while. I think you know. I, know, I don't uh, don't really like that. I don't. I I've been in a few other. I think. It, um... Of the the, I want to say one is like Mark the Spider Guy, maybe. But if that's a, I'm really bad with names. But my point is, some streams I don't. I literally I say I'm not smart and I'm kind of dumb. And some streams I don't get. Like I don't understand. They're like, I literally mean I don't understand what it means to gift a sub, or or how you can even literally do that. And like we're saying, I see some streams where it's not any thing about bugs or spiders or nature or anything it's just and again I, I don't mind it i just i'm lost sometimes and then i'm like i'm not going to say anything because i'll just be a weirdo 
No, you're absolutely right. I mean, I've stopped going to a lot of them um, because of that, because there's nothing, there's nothing about the, the actual animals or nature or books. And it, it, that's why I go there. I mean, that's the reason why I, you know, sub to these people because they do the animals. So without the animals, they're just humans and I don't like <laughs> humans. So I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to sit there with a bunch of humans. You know what? I'm, I'm kind of glad that you said that because I often feel like that, but I feel kind of pretentious or judgmental about saying the fact that general, you know, it's, it, that's one of the hard things is like, I generally don't, especially, I think I mentioned it to you and I, I'll say in the hobby here, especially after COVID, a lot of people got into the hobby um, because of lockdowns and the TLDR is a lot of them are very left orientated people and again, which I don't have a problem with them. The problem is that they have a problem with you if you're not of the same mindset. And that's fun. like I say, if I had a Discord server and they came to my server, I would just say, don't be mean to people, but be whoever you are. But I would get kicked out of their Discord server for nothing that has to do with bugs and not for being mean, just for having different ideas. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's... Uh... I've asked that this week and I'm not impressed. So, <laughs> say that again. I'm, uh, yeah, 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 never mind. So, I've asked that this week and I, had, I didn't appreciate it uh, at all. It wasn't, uh, <laughs> it's, it, I don't know what, I don't know what it is. I, to me, it's communism and I don't do communism because it's stupid and doesn't work. But, yeah. yeah People I'm Polish, so I'm not a big fan of communism. <laughs> well, people don't realize that socialism and communism are pretty much the same thing. You know, if you take it too far, it's just a communist. So, Well, even most Marxists, I mean, I'm sorry, socialists don't know that Marxists and socialists and communists, again, all a lot of them define socialism as more or less the step to socialism. I'm sorry, to, to actual communism, it's not ever a place or a, even though individuals may be foolish enough to not understand, again, things like definitions and meanings of words, but that is what socialism is. It's a transition from whatever, which is generally capitalism, to socialism, to prep people for rationing, shortages, lack of work ethic. So then we need the government to step in now so we need communism that that's literally the way it is it's to weaken the will of the people so they become dependent on the government they can't think for themselves to do the only thing they know is so you know what simon if i disagree with you i need the government to tell me what the solution is you and i can't think about it we can't not talk about it we, you know we have to have the government mandate and tell what we can and can't talk about because otherwise we would ha not know what to talk about and we would fight and then heaven forbid we disagree i I 100% agree. That's lucky because otherwise, you know, I'd have people knocking on my door. Um, no, it's, it's, it's absolute rubbish. I, it just drives me wild when, when people... And luckily, it's coming to an end, I think, this stupidity. It's, it's certainly drawing to a close, or it is a year for a start. Um, well, I mean, I'm eager to see how the school year starts because I know a lot of times... That's where I start to kind of start to hear what's going on with new things, whether it's, you know, political agendas in school. One thing is like my oldest daughter, for example, has environmental science. And I'm like, in the eighth grade, you should just be learning science. So I know what she's going to be learning is climate change is here. The only thing we need to do is go green and fuel is oil is bad. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to sit there and have to now kind of every day ask my daughter, what did you learn in this class? Because I'm going to have to say, oh, you know how they said gasoline is this and that? Like, I'm going to have to sit here and have her look at facts when they say, hey, hunt, hey, d kid, you hear about those wildfires? It's because climate change and we need less oil. Where my whole thing is, those fires over there are because we said we, we don't like the way it feels to watch a forest burn. So we wanted to stop it. And now they're over 
dr they're dried out and overgrown. So when there is an actual fire, they're out of control because we stopped controlled burns and stopped natural burning. But they'll tell my daughter that fires because people like me drive a gasoline car instead of an electronic vehicle where it's because we, we stopped doing these things. We fired EPA people and government people whose jobs it was to go out and say, oh, that will burn in a year if we don't do this, so we'll burn it. They fired them and said, let it grow. And then when that bursts into flames for miles, they think it's climate change. And that's what they're gonna tell my daughter. Well, I, uh, I mean, we don't have that problem. I mean, we don't have forest fires here, so uh, it's hard to speak. Uh, no one knows more about forest fires, but um, half the time, the people who set them on fire are the ones that are the problem. They throw in cigarettes, which is pretty mm -hmm. much start a fire with the cigarettes, to be honest. Um, it, it's mostly people who are doing stupid things like having a barbecue in a forest or having a campfire in a forest. And then walking away and leaving it. Um, but, but even then, you're one lightning strike away from that happening regardless, which is what people are ignoring, in my opinion. Like, And again, you're not wrong at all. But again, it, having a powder keg there and saying the guy who threw the cigarette on it is guilty when there was still a powder keg there that was going to maybe get hit by a car, struck by lightning, or firewood consume it anyway, get rid of the powder keg. <laughs> uh... I don't know. And I'm not and I want to be very clear. I'm not speaking for everywhere. I don't think the I'm not someone who thinks the world is not warming up. I know it is because we're coming out of an ice age. And so again, it's what I'm saying is here in the US and specifically in a state like Michigan where we have vast amounts of public and things that are uh, you know um not individually ran, that's the programs they have. My um n my cousin who went to school up north is having trouble finding jobs now because he went to school to manage controlled burns and as a and as a environmental engineer but now no one wants to hire him they they only want to hire people to put the fires out <laughs> again so and i can't speak for anywhere else i'm not speaking for you i'm not saying the world or whatever but i'm saying i know here it's incredibly mismanaged like that oh you know i say half the story fire so <laughs> It's just where things in it. We just we don't have them. Um, it's never hot enough here. Mm -hmm. It's very very rare. And, it, and it, when something does set on fire, it's always because of people. Um, I mean, my my way I stop it is just get rid of the people. I mean, <laughs> I don't think, no, I, I'm, I'm I'm being quite serious. I I quite happily have a call. You know, Oops. as long as I can write the list. You know what I'm saying? If I write the list, we can have a call. It's okay. Back in there. Start with the Canadians who club the seals to death. <laughs> they, they, they'd be first on my list. And then the, the Chinese and Japanese that go out killing the whales, they'd be next on my list. And, and that's how my list works, really. Well, see, I, I'm with you on Canada for sure because they send all of their geese here. <laughs> and I, I, when I was I was trying to say Trump's building the wall on the wrong side. If we built a wall here, we'd have none of these geese. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apart from that thing with wings, you know. Yeah. What you should do is open a uh, KFC. Open a what? A another KFC. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Canadian Goose. It's, um, I don't know why, but they're protected here. And I mean, I know, I'm not saying, well, I will say this, and I tell everyone this, if there was like ever, I don't know, for some reason, they were like, we just need someone who not only will they kill Canadian geese, but would like put in the overtime, like 80 hours a week. I would, I would do it probably for, if they just provided me room, board and bullets, I would do it for free because I hate them. They, they're like anywhere my kids want to play half of the year, there's green goose poop everywhere. And it like playgrounds, like places there has no business being the geese can't even eat there. They just migrate. there, walking from place to place and leave a bunch of green poop everywhere. I, I, I hate it. And I would love nothing more. Like I, I picture myself in one of those old world war two flak cannons and just like shooting up into the V formations of them as they fly by. I, I want to get drones involved, all of this. 
And then, like you're saying, the interesting thing is that's a whole untapped market of poultry. Uh, I actually like it, but <laughs> I prefer it to people, you know. But uh, I don't like geese or people. Can you see this little guy? Can you see him poking out? I can't. Obviously, I'm miles away. But <laughs> you have a guess? Do you know what this guy is? What is it, though? <laughs> She can't see up there. Well, I can't see the life of but I know. Yeah, he's the only part of him's poking out. Yeah. There you are, look. What is it? Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. That looks like a giant orange. Very close. Think bigger, eventually, at least. Uh, bigger, bigger, bigger than an orange. Uh, oh, really Biggest I orange. <laughs> Uh, it's not often Sadie, is it? What's that? Often Sadie, is it? Nope. Close. Where are I? No, you're right there with the uh, Hoffman Sadie guy. Big and orange. No, it's gone. Go on, tell me. Break the news. Come on, you know Magnificus. Oh, Magnificus. Oh, God. Yeah, Magnificus. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. I, I I know you know it's just one of those in the moment, I'm sure, yeah. 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 These little things these wistaria part I, I wistaria or wisteria, I forget. That I'm noticing it. Uh, Nick gave them to me and they love it and everything. Um they're just tearing it apart. So I, I'm gonna try and see if I can start growing more of those. And they, they're nice hides because they have you can I hope I hope you can see the kind of texture to them. Yeah. This is, in fact, a bigger one here, but, and I, I'm trying to use it for them because I know they like their individual space. So I'm hoping that'll give it more hides, but they keep flipping them over. <laughs> the, uh, one of the best things for them, if you're just breeding them, is uh, egg cartons. Egg cartons, yep. The only uh, reason I hesitate is because, um, I try to stay bioactive, but even from what I understand, certain most the ones that people use for this are for the most part bioactive, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The cat, yeah, the cat will that so the, yeah, it's no problem. They actually eat it, so not a big deal. Um, I don't use them. I use complete bioactive. I mean, we've got that with moss here, obviously, um, and other stuff that you know. Why bother with the the egg cartons? No, no point, is it, for me? She's got so much stuff. <laughs> nearly all our trees are our wood as well, so it's it's not a problem. We just go out and find any bit of wood, and you can guarantee it's off an oak or a birch or something. So you can just chuck it in. It's not a big deal. I have to step away for one minute. i got to get Bobo's okay. soup ready, so I'll be back in a second. Bobo's soup. That is super yummy, Bobo. Oh, you're on the typey, are you? You're not on the, uh, not on the mic. What are you doing? Are you cleaning your feet? That mantis here watching out. Remember that camera's on? Yeah. This is watching you now. You know. There's an ant, isn't it? Yeah. There's another one there. I hope they're not getting out. No, I don't think so. I think it's... Um... I'd be very sad if they're getting out. <laughs> another one here. Yeah, get out there. No, I think it's... No. Yeah, I don't think so. We have to check... No. Tomorrow, I'll see if we've got the ants in there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. there's no ants. So <laughs> they're definitely getting out. Oh, I tell you what, it would like that really big a monster. Ah, yeah. At the same time, I'm sad about being where it is. It's like I can't just get it out. How's that deputy doing? It's all right. No key. In the tank up there. Yeah, she will Still a bit dopey. I don't, I don't like that. Really don't like that. 
Was it me? I was roasting in here. Twenty six point six here. All right. That's pretty bloody roasting, if you ask me. Right. First time. Right? Hey? Yeah, right. Nice. Well that was a good time. I was sweating like a pig. All well, my hairs are all stuck together on the jet. Okay. I'm tempted to put leave this mantis on this uh Simba lever on this stick tonight. There's no one on the table. I might leave the ghost on that flat. I don't know yet. I'm just worried about the other deadly that just keeps climbing down. Let me go in there. Oh, I don't see anything. Come on, dude, what are you doing down there? Come on. Come on, dude. Come on. Oh, you're holding on to your side, aren't you? I go up here. Up here. You're holding on to me real tight, so I could be running a hole as well. Are you going to lay an egg? I need to lay one on there. Label on there. That would be nice. Run up some orange and egg there. Stop watching that. It's just stressing it out. Come on. Stress. It's a stress merchant, that mantis. She's got a face pressed up against Which a one? pot. Dolly. Ah. She had a face pressed up against a pot. Like face to face with one of the baby Godwins. Stressing it out. I think he's making this soup by hand. I think he's like chopping onions now or something. It was just made him and not anybody else somewhere. Oh, good guys. You've molded, haven't you? That's a bit water. There it is. Ugh. Sorry, what did I miss? Oh, he's wondering uh, if he was making the soup. Yeah, getting, getting soup and setting up Godzilla. Now, that's, that's not a nice thing to call your daughter. Hey, she loves it. She's just <laughs> as mad that she doesn't have the breath weapon yet. What's... Uh, What's soup for the army? Say it again. What soup have you made them? It was leftover cheese and enchilada. Ugh. All right. Fair enough. They're half. Well, they're not half. In my Polish, they're half. But they're Mexican, Japanese on that side, and then Polish. So they don't mind the spice. They prefer it. Polish food is very spicy. Not when I eat it. No, when you eat it, no, but it is when we make it. Because <laughs> we, we do make, um, oh, we used to make a fair bit of Polish food. Um, don't really do it anymore. It's mostly Chinese and Indian. In fact, you're every meal Chinese and Indian. Or something quick because we're busy. It's just the way it goes, isn't it? Really, you get to get so busy. There's so much here to take care of that you know. Well, time now is about 10 p.m. That's where you're five hours ahead, right? Yeah, well, we we just like we just finished with these ants. Uh, I haven't fed all the mantis names for the jumping spiders yet. I have to put together, I got all my isopod stuff done, but I said I got that money tree, the uh, pot, and then that plant, and I want to get that. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to start putting all that together so I don't have the plants out for too long. Well, 
what's the money tree? It's like on the thing. No, it's not like the Sims money tree, otherwise we don't want. Yes. You know, speaking of, just type in Google money tree and I'll look at it. I know. It's, it's quite cool, yeah. Yeah, I know. I think it does. So I actually like it in spite of the name. I just, the thing I liked is, um, like I think I mentioned, if I'm going to get a house mantis, I wanted to get something that was higher like that. And then gave me, like I say, um, I'm trying to, I don't know if I already said this, but I, I know I was thinking it. So I'm having the money tree and then that other plant as more of the middle in between. And then that creeping Jenny and Moss going in the bottom. But the only like anything I could find that was taller seemed to be uh, it didn't have like I said I wanted a something with more of like a I don't know if trunk's the right word but not you know I'm saying like a a, a thick enough is that the term trunk I guess because they don't feel like trunks they're branches but I don't I don't know it's a stem on a plant but I know what you mean a nice thick juicy one yeah. like a monstera or something. Yeah, not something oh. if I'm repotting is going to snap or split or break or, you know. Yeah. I mean, I like the bromeliads. I mean, I think, I think they're beautiful plants anyway. Um, I'm so plant ignorant right now. You're literally speaking Greek to me. Like, I, at, when I was at English Garden today, the lady was kind of laughing at me because I don't know anything. In fact, hold on. I want to blow your screen up. Hold on. That's, that's a, <laughs> well, I try not to remove you. Hold on. <laughs> so what is that? A bromeliad. But See, that's awesome. They're like really, really tough. They're like really tough. They're like plastic. It's really, really a tough one. My like isopods won't even eat it. It's that tough. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's been quite quite a pretty plant as well. But they're really good. Um, I, I like them because like, sometimes they'll get fruit flies on it. I just put uh, mantis nymphs on They'll just eat the fruit flies. <laughs> it's pretty handy. I mean, and room is always covered in fruit flies there's always fruit flies somewhere in the room um obviously. do you have any um recommendations tips advice for when i set that up if, if i do put a mantis in on it you know things to avoid maybe something i should put in there in, anything about you know but in there you mean in a tank no just in the plant no just put it on the plant that's it. Okay. Just feed him, make sure he's got food every once in a while. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know your uh, bug infestations in, in the US, so I don't know if you get like the odd spider coming down or anything. Because they'll eat them, you know, if there's any spiders in the house and they get on the plant, they'll, they'll eat them. And any flies that come in, they'll eat them. So if it, if it looks thin, feed it. Don't catch it. Uh, a cricket or a grasshopper or whatever you've got there, even a yeah, cockroach. If you one of the things on my plan for the end of the season is to try. Who's coming out? Is to yeah. try to get. Um, I want to try to get a bunch of wild crickets going into something. They love cockroaches, so you know if you see any cockroaches, give them a cockroach. Love it. I had. Um, in fact, I had those dubias, but I actually gave them to Nick who's like i say he's a lot he, his experience and resources are a lot more vast than mine but i gave them to him and he's basically going to just kind of start breeding them and he's like yeah just give them to me and if you need any and i got them and let me know and i was like good because otherwise i'm just going to keep these here and they're going to die off eventually or waste away but at least he's got pets and you know can focus more on you know for me they i was just keeping them alive they would you know but Breeding them is, you know, different. So I, I actually keep my dubias as pets. I've, I've got them for feeding. For and, what? Uh, I've got them in here, which is a completely you dry. You understand what you said? You got them for, for what? Pets. Feeding. Yeah, I got them for feeding. Um, and now they're just crazy. There's, there's absolutely everywhere. Will, there's just, will you handle roaches? Roaches. Because yeah. I still won't. I'm not there yet. Why? Right, look. Lovely. Beautiful things. Especially that especially the males because of the wings. I, I really like them. 
Good. Love it. Come here. But yeah, they're, they're brilliant. I, I just think they're marvellous, marvellous creatures. They're horrible. They're really up there. I'm like, look at your box. Put the meter on. This, the only thing that bothers me is tarantulas, to be honest. Well, see, there's, there's different levels. Like, some things, I, I it was okay. So, in dubias, for example, when I had that dubia um, enclosure, I could sit there and watch them all day. When I, especially their feeding response was crazy. I loved it. But I still, now those, I just don't want them touching me. <laughs> they're fine as long as they're in a thing over there and I can watch them. But the, like thinking about handling a roach to me still is just gives me the heebie jeebies. But similarly, Two months ago, handling my garter snake would have gave me the heebie-jeebies, you know? Now, these guys, these are regular roaches, which are Turkish roach. These are really, really fast. I have literally got hundreds of the damn things. The, these are the ones I feed the mantis for the simple reason they're horrible. <laughs> I don't like them. Will the mantises eat out of your hand? Yeah, of course they do. Okay, I, I I didn't know if it was something where the shape of their appendage wouldn't, like, with the curvature of hand wouldn't, like, you know what I'm saying? If it didn't mathematically make sense. So, like, I know I've seen them, like, go for stuff, but I've never seen someone put, uh, like, a roach in their palm of their hand and have the mantis just grab it. But I, I wasn't oh. sure. No, you're better off just offering it like that. Um, yeah, I'll do it. They might even stand on your hand eating the food. Yeah. That, that to me seems, I, I don't know. Come here, babe. Come here, babe. You've got to try and catch the roach now. These are so quick. Oh my God, these are so fast. I just end up with <laughs> roach legs most of the time. Yeah, I've got a roach. Got a roach in my hand and a mantis in the other hand. And the problem is getting over the bloody roach. And I was about to say, I'd imagine it's. What's this? There you go. Okay, nice. And see, it's funny, like, this is one of those things I would, I would never have done unless I watched someone, like, do it literally like that. Now, my only other issue now would be the fact that I have to hold a roach to do that. <laughs> well, there's always days, mate. Freezers. That, that, that I'm not worried about. For me, it's just I want to get comfortable doing it. Like, there's no reason not to. Know, you know, it's not like it's a pit viper or something. <laughs> no, not a roach. You've just got to watch the mantis doesn't grab your fingers. So you're better off using the, uh, using the tweezers, to be honest. Otherwise, they will actually start to eat your fingers. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll start biting. And it's not too bad with the Chinese mantis. They don't hurt. But uh, like that girl, she, she would have hurt. She would have hurt. <laughs> She's, it's not gentle at all. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that roach now, because she's, she's um, heavily pregnant, I'm hoping that roach will make her lay an egg tonight. I'll put her on here. I'm not using any proper terms here, okay? <laughs> Anyone else That's okay. Know? It's screaming at the screen now saying, Eat, it's a new beaker. Yes, we know it's a new beaker, but I'm just using the base terms that people know. You know what I mean? It's better saying an egg. You Bugs for that. dummies. Not everybody understands what a new beaker is. So I, I think sometimes it's better to, to use general terms. If you start getting all complicated, people get bored, I think. Just get all confused and, you know, it's like I'll say to Liliana, I'll say, uh, check on the strong dog mantis. And she's like, which one's that? And I have to pretty much say the green one or the one, <laughs> on, the, you know, the one on such a plant. Uh, or like this one's got a name. So I'll say Simba. Have a look at Simba. And she's like, oh, right. Because there's so many mantis in here. I think we've got 20 species at the moment. If you start using all the scientific names to people who, don't use them every day it just oh. and that frustrates me a little bit with isopods because some of them are like that but even like you know wally with supreme gecko and isopod when he like the uh geckos 
are very similar. Like to me, all of those names don't mean a thing and I don't retain them. I don't, you know, if, and if they're all different to me, you know, I'm not memorizing any of that name, <laughs> like nothing. And it's, it's, it's kind of interesting the way that is in so many di different pet hobbies. And, and that's one of the things I was, I said at English garden, I was talking to one of the ladies there about that, how some plants like just, you know, my, I have a rainbow fern, which is rainbow moss, which is also peacock moss and peacock fern. And then they have different, a couple different ones where it's the same scientific family. But again, for lack of better terms, there's different morphs, I guess, you know, and my, again, in my own dumb words, but, and so again, it's like, it's just, I, I, I get it. It's, it's so overwhelming at times. There's so many different bryophytes, it's unbelievable. Like that, that box of moss I showed you before, I had like five or six different species in it. And it's all <laughs> like the same little area. And it's like five or six different species, but you show people it and go, oh, this is this, this is this. And they go, oh, you mean moss? You know, because it's moss, isn't it? It's just moss. You say, oh, there's yeah. one carpet moss or spiky moss or, you know, one that looks like a Christmas tree. But at the end of the day, to your average person, it's just moss. I yeah, I, I only care if I'm buying it, only in that I want to make sure I'm getting what I'm ordering. But also, I do want to make sure I'm ordering the right thing, you know, because, like, I can't blame you if I order the thing that is, you know, right on your end, but I just didn't know what I was ordering. The only, the only time you get that is when you're speaking to somebody else who's been in the hobby or who's in the business by himself, and you talk to them. If you use a common name, they look down on you. Uh, <laughs> I could get away with it because I'm on YouTube. But if you if you just like talking to somebody, like if I want to buy something, uh, you'll generally use the, the scientific name to make sure you're getting what you're asking for, like you just said. One of the places now that we're actually talking about this that I see that the probably more right now than anywhere else is um springtail communities but i mean just springtails you know, there's that there's I, I don't i don't think i have seen a single common name of a single springtail not one the, even like the one that is the whatever the common one that you know i don't i don't think i've ever heard the i just you know the that's it like i say when i hear springtails the oh the most I've heard was like there's silver and orange springtails, but even then that's the vaguest description because I'm sure there's plenty of orange ones and a lot of silver ones. So you know, like that's so broad and vague that it, it frustrates me. They just mean the ones in the hobby, and you've got like the candida, uh, <laughs> which is the temperate white, you might have heard it called. It's a temperate springtail, and then you've got the columbola, which is like the tropical springtail, the tropical white. So you've got like, the temperate white and the tropical white. There's your options. And you've got the orange, which I cannot remember the scientific name for because I just don't deal in them. Yeah. Um, but if I look uh, just in the UK alone, I think we've got about 70 different species of springtail. <laughs> so, you know, I, I've got several of them. Um, but they, they don't really do that well, to be honest. But I find that temperate whites do the best. Out of all of them. I've kept them all the same. That might be the problem. Uh, I, I don't keep them on charcoal, number one. I find that a complete waste of time. Uh, I keep them in substrate with, you know, like the same substrate, sub, uh, substrate you would use for ice pots. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same with bark laid on top of it. Keep it moist. Keep your own fish food. You like millions of springtails. That's it. And when you want springtails, you pick up one of the pieces of bark, tap it, you've got springtails. I laugh because um, I do have a bioactive springtail bin, but like I have a couple isopod bins where if I didn't, if I wasn't worried about contaminating in mankind, like I just laughingly say my two or three of my biggest springtail cultures are in my isopod bins. <laughs> I 100% agree. You know, the other day, I, I was struggling. I had an Atlantis hatch, uh, a new hatch, uh, and I put them all up. I thought, right, it's time to feed them. I go and grab my flies. So I went to grab my fruit flies. And when I took the lid off, they'd all grown wings and decided they could fly now. <laughs> so they got it mated with a uh, flying one through the top of the, the mesh. Wow. And then they, they 
learn to fly again. They, they can fly again, the flightless ones. So I took the lid off, about 500 fruit flies come flying out the top, and I have nothing to feed them with. So what I ended up doing is going through all my isopod bins and tapping springtails out into all the pots. So I had like mm-hmm. way over 100 pots. I'm filling them all up with uh, springtails from my isopod bins. So what I saw. Brilliant. What I'm starting to do now is like so you know the guys. In fact, you hear the dairy cows and milkbacks. They're both about due for a new enclosure. So I start like I am over to my right. I'm not again not going to move this, but um, I have three or four bit. I think I have five total. I think I have three done and two I'm going to do. But I start them now. Throw springtails in there, and I I let it sit for. I try to let it sit for a good month before I put any of the isopods in there. That way, if, it, if something dies, you know, if I see this complete wipe, if dwarf whites show up or, you know, whatever happens, I'd rather have that first month. Uh, I try to always do that. And I'm not the best with it because, you know, sometimes some people just come over and give me isopods and I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> but, you know, I, I try to do that. But I, I, I don't have a bin without springtails if, of isopods. I, I always seed them. Yeah, I, I have... Uh... I can't do that, obviously. I've got, to, I've got to put them in a bin straight away and set them up and <laughs> that's done. I can't just leave it seen because space is money. So I can't, I can't do that. But one thing when you were saying it earlier, I don't allow dwarf whites in the house. They're not allowed anywhere near this house. I hate the damn things. They get everywhere. And saying that, I have a problem with maculatum, zebras. They're in every single bin. I had no idea how. I had just no idea how they get in the other bins. Just put them in them all. Every single one. I've got a, the odd zephyr in it. And I'm like, oh my God, another one. Which is hilarious because I told you I found those dwarf whites earlier in my zebra bin. So apparently over here, they're just both hanging out together. <laughs> Oh, and like I say, that's I never got, like, if I would have went out and got dwarf whites, that, that would make sense. You know, but it, you know, ah. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's crazy. I know what you're saying. That's one of my next big projects is now I'm going to have to pull all that apart, pull all my zebras out, and probably freeze, bake and freeze that soil. Because <laughs> I just, I, I hate dwarf whites. Um, there's another way of getting rid of them. Um, if they're in a, a, a temporary bin, if they're in, if they're in a bin where I suppose at the uh, in a temperate area, you can actually really kill. You can put the, the tub below freezing, just below freezing, and it will kill the dwarf whites. But it, it will, um, you know, if you've got temperate ice pots like scavers or lavers, they're, they're usually pretty tough. Prunosis are, are probably the best ones, I think. They're, they're, they're pretty hard. Um, but yeah, the dwarf whites, no, no, I won't have them in the house. No way. Yeah, I, I'm going to end up just nuking that soil, like I say. I'm going to bake it and then freeze it. And then, like I say, what I try to do with that is throw it in like a... What I'm trying to do now is have, like I said, a bin of substrate. And I'm thinking about even what I want to start doing is having a bin with substrate with springtails in it, where, again, when I take it out, I don't have to add them. But what I want... what I Again, what I tend to do is I want to have, you know, that. And then when I take this substrate, again bake it so i i don't care if literally everything i don't care if the good stuff dies in it because i just don't want dwarf whites and then in throwing that back in with that eventually the bioactivity will get back up again because the other stuff is in there and the other stuff I, and i like that's one thing like, people say a lot like never never bake it you know it's again one of those rules like it's okay to if you're going to do certain things with it after but that that's at least what I'm kind of envisioning in my head is having a bin of substrate kind of always on the go, always ready, where once I have this, I can, you know, I, I keep using the term nuke it, but anything I can do, you know, to make sure there's no dwarf whites or anything else in there, I'll do that. And it seems to work out well with the substrate, but in fact, this zebra bin that I have is, I think the oldest bin that I had, they're like the first guys I got. So now I'm curious how long the dwarf whites have been in there. <laughs> I'm surprised the zebras haven't killed them because 
They're just so prolific. Just out, out eat them completely, out eat them. I think, like you say now, with the substrate, I've got a, a huge, uh, I don't know what to call it, storage bin here. And that's just full of uh, substrate that I make, you know, with the same as yours. I, I watched mm-hmm. it the other day. Uh, and, and mine's pretty much the same as yours. I don't bother with charcoal, though. And uh, instead of, um, I've no idea what just flew past me. So it just flew past me. It was big and I don't know where it was. Uh, <laughs> it's probably probably a ghost dancer. So I've got one missing somewhere. Um, so I don't put charcoal in. Um, I stopped doing that. And I don't put the orchid uh, bark in. I put white wood in. Mm-hmm. I crumble white wood in it. So it's got it's got a wood, it's got dead leaves in it. Uh, it's pretty much just compost after that. And it's absolutely honest with springtails. And I've also got zebras in there as well. <laughs> I have to pick them out as well. But yeah. Like it's it's a brilliant idea if you're going to do a lot to have a nice big bin of substrate all red mixed. It really speeds things up. So you just do you just spend like an hour making all this substrate. I mean, you must be. Let's put it in your terms. What am I? One, two, three. But it, it weighs heavier than I do. <laughs> so yep. there you go. Uh, which is about ten to one hundred and forty, hundred about one hundred and fifty pounds of substrate in there, dry. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really handy just get a bin and do that, and it gets halfway, and then I'll top it back up to the top again. It's really, really useful, yeah. And most of the stuff I like, even a lot of the um, my planting stuff, I could I don't like to, but I could use my, my substrate realistically for plants, just I don't really feel the need to, but like I say, it's nice. A lot of the um, like those that you see, I didn't, I didn't have potting soil. That's all like the substrate I made. The only recently since that my video of making that substrate have I used potting soil for anything. So it, it, it's interesting. <laughs> I use really cheap uh, compost from a supermarket, which I find is the best one because you know what. So I was talking to a lady, sh- and I, long story short, she was saying that you can contact the city here and say, like, can I come pick up compost? And they have a whole thing where you can just come and grab it. And I keep forgetting to look into that. Yeah, topsoil. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I generally buy the one that's so cheap, it's unbelievable. Because the cheapest, cheapest one is nothing but mulch. It's just leaves and wood that's rotted away and turned into substrate. <laughs> if you buy the more expensive ones, you'll find little balls of fertilizer in it and all sorts of other things. Like I hate things. the perlite. I hate that stuff. Perlite. Perlite. Oh, it's another thing perlite, yeah. It's an absolute waste of time unless you're growing a cactus. The And the only other... Uh, one thing I do, and it's funny, like I hate perlite, but I hear it's really good for, and let me know if, if, the, if I'm right or wrong, but for um, drainage layers, because they're, it's just so light, as opposed to rocks. I don't use the drainage layer. I only use it in some things, mainly for, well, I only use it in plants. I don't use it for any of my isopods, to be specific, but like, I don't, and I don't know. I, don't I use it, like, I don't know if you can see on this, like this drainage layer here. That, that's the extent, but for my isopods and anything, I don't, but for any, for my plants and generally, I'm sorry, specific, like anything that I'm generally having that's sealed, I, I do the drainage layer, but. Yeah, terrariums, yeah. Yes, thank you. Terrariums, but, but like this sort of stuff, I know you can see these, uh, this sort of stuff, no, no, I don't bother because I mean, this, this. This sort of thing. Let me find an empty one, so I don't want to disturb a mantis at this time. Uh, that will do. That's an empty one. Yeah, I don't have one in my garter snakes. But I don't have one in my um, gecko either. That looks terrible, though. Uh, wait a minute. But yeah, I'm doing this. I mean, this has got plants in as well. Now, I'm doing something like this. Um, oh. there's, there's no, no drainage layer in there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, clay. In the bottom there, 
this struggle from here to see what you can see. Uh, it's got a trilliscantia in it. But that on the back is uh, just moss with clay on it. I just grab the moss with the clay on it and then wet it and stick it to the back of the jar and it stays <laughs> up. That's been on there a couple of years. So, yeah. I am hope I'm hoping this, oh, I, I said I went to that place, but I, I called them back later and I was like, can I just come in some other day and I'm going to make sure I buy something, not just come in, but like, can I just come in here and like collect moss like for 20 minutes? And they're like, let me check with the manager. They're like, yeah, he doesn't mind. I was like, you guys are awesome. Well, you, you just go in there and, and take the moss off the plant pots. Is that what you need? It grows on the plants. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, if I wanted to be a jerk, I could just like clip little things off of each plant and like come home and propagate them. But I'm like, I'm not going to be a jerk to someone who's already being so nice to me. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. It, it's, it's hard for me. You know, you know, I get that in my head because, like I said, I can just go literally five minutes that way <laughs> uh, and I'm in the woods and there's just moss everywhere, it's covered in moss. Uh, I can go out the back and there's moss in my own garden, so I could I could pick it up there. So it's no need for me to do any of that. But I, I can understand if you're in a place where it's a bit drier or it's a bit colder or whatever, warmer. Mm -hmm. I, th I think your problem is is the heat, isn't it? You, it gets really hot, doesn't it? We get here in Michigan in specific. It gets hot and humid. We don't get much dry heat. But the thing, the, the winter is what's always kind of more, uh, I would, uh, it's a lot more, in, um, a lot colder than it is, you know, over there. I find that if we have a really cold winter, by springtime, we've got the best moss. It is, okay. It flattens it completely. And it's like full of snow. We always get the best moss. I don't have another snow just because it's, it's soaking it. I don't know, but we always get good moss after a, a bad winter. But we've not had a bad winter for a long time, so I don't now, remember, it anymore. I got to start paying more attention. Like, it's just one of those things, like, we're in the past, what, through going on three years now, like I say, all everything I've been progressing or getting more experience and knowledge like i said because this all started with me just going out on walks to get out of the house then seeing an animal and then filming them and then getting isopods and then you know making ecospheres and now propagating you know it's like and now all these things it's like just one thing after another and now like i say i'm eager for the turn of seasons to things you're talking about but also now i'm just curious this is the first season i'm just like walking around looking for moss so i'm curious how at you know, when fall comes, things get brown. I'm curious what the moss, is the moss going to be that much more distinct and vivid? I, I, I don't know. I'm just, again, it's one of those things, like I say, I did before, for the, for the two years before I had isopods, I never would have walked out there and looked at isopods and never cared about if isopods were there. But now that I know, now, like I say, I'm looking at the moss is the s same way. I'm like, I wonder what it's going to be like now that I'm looking at it. So I'm, I'm eager. I, I, I can, I can appreciate that because they'll never, bothered with anything like that and now she spots moss in movies you know <laughs> what you say oh you'd like that moss growing on that tree and I, you know she, she's obsessed with the moss when you go out collecting moss she comes back with more bags than i do and i'm i'm about in like the jars and glass now like i go somewhere like oh my gosh that would be great to just put moss in you know, like uh, anything, it, it's it's fascinating how, like you say, when the world opens up, you're like, you see, you see what those new things everywhere. I wish. I love you, been, Bobo. If you'd have been closer today, you could have you could have taken so many jars. Uh, we used to have a room for jars and nothing else. So yeah, just jars, all different kinds of jars and and, and weird glasses and stuff that you could make terrariums out of. <laughs> Uh, and now we've got all stashed behind the isopods. So I probably never going to get used. We're going to throw some away. But, you know, I don't know anyone else who, uh, who, who would use them, to be honest. Yeah, I, I'm going to get going in a moment or two. It's yeah. coming up on our charge. I want to, like I say, I want to show you this little funny thing. Let me get any glasses and go to the screen because I'm miles away. Oh, yeah, go check it out real quick. My daughter got a little thing out of the machine, and I'm I'm making a moss terrarium out of this. <laughs> That's the sort of thing I could do. 
Yeah, I say, I see, I see something. No, 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 don't no, throw that out. Don't no, no, throw it out. <laughs> I just, I just got to say, for you, I'm knocking around because I, I ain't got any terrariums in here, believe it or not. I've got, I think I've got one. Uh, it's high up on the shelf. Um, but yeah, we haven't got any. We plan on putting some shelving up just for terrariums because we have so many jars. And we want to get rid of them. Frank's yeah. hot sauce, <laughs> and then my my daughters get this pop at the Mexican restaurant. So. Yeah, yeah. I, like again, I just can't wait to do stuff with these. <laughs> we've we've got several bottles downstairs. We've we've got a um, I don't know some weird bottle of something, some foreign liquor. It was <laughs> weird shaped bottle. It had a really thin neck, and I had to pet it and buy extra tweezers just to get stuff inside it. And it was it was uh, you know the best ones, the really long. Mm -hmm. Really, and then it was it was just a pain in the neck to do. I've got more yeah, that for about a I'm, year. I'm eager to get to some of those, but I don't have a good like the. Well, you're not at the thing anymore. I just have what would be like that standard metal, you know, eight, seven, eight inch pair of tweezers. So not anything like you say that. Uh, a couple of my jars, I'm like, oh my god, I wish I had, because I, I it's like I would drop it in and I would just, it, however it rested, I would maybe be able to move it a little with the tweezers, but not manipulate it well. And I'm like, I wish I could do that. Now I'm getting a lot more proficient at it, but it's, just, it's yeah. funny. All sorts of, uh, I can see that, but all sorts of uh, different tweezers for the, for the different terrariums, like where, you know, different jobs in the terrariums. I attempt to just use like one. Well, this one's always on my desk, and the other ones I, I read the book on because I use this one for feeding cockroaches to mantis, so uh, it's always out. Uh, and that, if I'm making a terrarium, this is what I'm going to use. Just can you put I, that up again? But it's just a oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I just like the, the it's got a bit of wood on it, it serves as a handle, it's a good way to clip it together, it's sort of telling you where to push it. To, to hold on like the best. <laughs> so I think it's great. And obviously, if you turn it round, you've got like a little uh, spoon type thing or a shovel on the other end, which is, you know, pretty handy. I find it's good for like if you're planting plants, you can just dig it and then turn it round and put your plant in. So I've not made a terrarium for so long now. Uh, I need to make one. Uh, I really, really want to make one. I'm going to, I didn't be redoing all these. I said I would do that when we came in here. So I got to like, get uh, tons and tons of moss with clay on it, so I can stick it to the back. Uh, what's uh, again? I'm I'm so I go down rabbit holes, but um, I was watching a not not documentary, but a lecture on um, bryophytes today, and they didn't have much of what I was looking for, but I'm surprised how much moss I'm finding on gr um, sandy gravel. Yeah. Like so much, like I, you know, just, so the rip, the creek is high because of, uh, with those storms. So it left a big mound of sand. So I went out there and got like a third, you know, about a little less than a, probably a quarter of a bucket. And um, I'm going to be drying it out, but I'm going to start using that more, at least mixing it more into the substrate or not using substrate all and just using sand because I, I want to, like I say, I'm all about experimenting. Like I'll try putting moss on sphagnum moss, moss on, I'll put like one enclosure where it's half down the middle substrate, half um, moss on the other side and then I'll put lava rocks. And again, I just want to see what happens. And, but I've never, I, I'm just now realizing like I got to start putting more sand. I don't know. And, but I'm also, then I'm like, I just mean, my brain doesn't stop at do this. My brain always is like, well, why does that work? And if it works with this, because it has this property, what other things would have that property that could do it more efficiently, better, lighter, you know, my brain is like that. So I'm like, what is it about the gravel as opposed, and again, I'm sure it's different mosses. These are all the things I don't have time now, but like I say, one, in fact, one of your, um, I guess it can't be a. What was your your podcast? Um, no idea. No, your your podcast that you're not. It's not a podcast, but your your Saturday um, episode, your your live stream. 
Oh, in Verticast, yeah. Yeah, it can't be in Verticast, but one thing to maybe to do is talk about that, you know, Moss. Like, because, you know, I mean it. Like, I think you and I could probably have a solid 30 to 40 minute conversation about Moss. Me asking my dumb questions, you answering them with what you know, and so on. And you know what I'm saying? Like, just an idea, because again, that's something where I want to know more, but it's, it's you know, not many people are Moss experts. And like I say, a lot of the Moss lectures I'm seeing are things about molecular level and cell, you know, I, I get it, but that's not what I necessarily care about. But so it's, it's kind of trying to find lectures or information that is streamlined for what I want, not just for everybody. And it's hard. You're going to struggle with that. It's the same with scientific papers. You go down like, oh, I, I want to learn about this. You get a scientific paper and you're spending 10 minutes reading about the method. I, I, you know, I did something and it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's just endless paragraphs of long words that are not needed. I uh, prefer to talk to the person who wrote the scientific paper because <laughs> then I can ask the questions after. Yeah, well, that's fine. Sorry. Oh, right, okay. No, sorry. No was just saying. I'm not going to so, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to wrap it up, mate. You have to go. Yeah, I said um, I was about to, I was trying to leave five minutes to go, but I'm never in a hurry. I talked to you. Right. It's like 28C in here, which is 90 something, I think. 1820 now. No, it's about 90 something in this room. So. Oh, wow. That's, I, that's, that's why the shirt came off and everything. It's abs I This thing's just stuck to my back. The heating's down here. So I'm right in front of the heating, so I'm probably even higher than that where I am. So yeah, I, I would I'm, die. I hate that kind of heat and humidity. Good luck. Yeah, I gotta get a shower because this is like the tropics in here. Obviously, it has to be. So it, it's Be before cool. you do go, go to the computer. I want to show you one thing. I got okay. left a nice little present, and then we'll say oh. goodbye. Oh wait, wait. I'm gonna go without my glasses. You can't see what you So check out what. Our snake oh. left for my isopods. Can you see that? Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely love that. I get hundreds of skins every week from uh, my mantis. Oh, really? Well, I've got so many mantis. I get, I get so many skins out of them uh, in a week. So... I've got constant supply of the, it's the same stuff as a, a sense here. It's just nearly all calcium. They absolutely love it. I, I put them in, and, and obviously, my mantis dies. I put the mantis in as well, and eat that. So it's uh, just a complete, uh, complete diet for them, really. It's just a, a circle of life in this room. One goes, one goes. Wait a Right, I'll flick her off then, Steve. Alrighty. Thanks for hanging out and let now, me do this. If you weren't so late in the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I wasn't expecting the medical appointment, like I kind of mentioned, to take so long, but then she came to spend the night. So, you know, again, not complaining. It just threw a big monkey wrench in my plans, but one that, you know, a monkey wrench I would love to use. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just it's just with it being so late and that. Yeah. I've got to wash up and I've got to check all these and spray and everything yet. So that that's a good 30, 40 minutes. I'm going through all those. So yeah, I'll be a while here yet. All right. Thanks, Steve. I'll see yep, you next bye time. Now. See you next time. Hope you yep, if Lil's there, tell her I said hi and bye. Okay, go through, mate. All right, cheers.